So let me begin by saying that cybersecurity, just in less than a decade ago, has been a foreign subject to most people. Today, unfortunately, it has been part of our daily lives. I'm sure many of you have your credit card numbers stolen bef before, as have I. And just recently, a neighbor of mine fell victim to ransomware. Our critical infrastructure is constantly under cyber attacks. Cybersecurity is impacting every single one of us. These were once science fiction stories before. Today, movies are made based on these real life stories happening around us. So while we all are doing our online shopping and connecting with friends and family over social media networks, the cyber criminals are doing the same things on the dark net. They are trading anything from stolen credentials to fake identities from any state or country you'd like to weaponized cyber attack software. You can buy it right out of the box. We have software as a service, right? They have exploit as a service. It is real. And guess what? They even receive star ratings for the services and products they sell, just like on eBay and Amazon. Why not? Because if you just spent two bitcoins to buy a bunch of credit card numbers, you would like to know if they work. Or if you're traveling with that fake passport, you will want to know if you're going to end up in jail. And as criminals, you obviously cannot trust each other. <laughs> Fascinating stuff, right? So when I was invited to give this short talk, maybe three more minutes left, I was asked to share the unique perspectives and challenges around cybersecurity in the financial industry. How is it different? Or is it? So before I answer that, let me ask you this. Have you noticed the similarities and the convergence of the digital and physical world around us? Just look around. We have virtual assistants on your phones. We have virtual reality, augmented reality, Pokemon Go. We have artificial intelligence, biometrics authentication, self-driving cars, and robots that look and move and even begin to think like us. No! <laughs> Deny it if you all you want. So to me, fighting the cybersecurity battles are just like fighting physical disease and physical battles. The Internet of Things are making everything connected just like organisms in our bodies. Look, we even use the same terms to describe them. So some of you may ask, is this ever going to end? Unfortunately, cyber attacks, just like physical illness, are here to stay. This is the new reality. We have to accept the new reality and be comfortable with it. It doesn't mean that we're not going to do anything about it. So let me share with you a side story about myself. All right. And this is not a photo of me, because I couldn't find a good childhood fo photo of myself, so I stole one from my son. Do not tell him. <laughs> so when I was growing up, my parents, like many Asian families, wanted me to become a doctor or a lawyer. I rebelled and went down my own path of computer security and ethical hacking. Lately, I realized they have won because I had become a doctor and a detective in the cyberspace. <laughs> so the good news is, as long as I'm going to pretend I did not hear that. 
as, as long as there are diseases and bad guys, we will always be in demand, and guess what? Will be very hard to outsource. So now back to the subject on cybersecurity in the financial industry. Every industry is, dif is different, and every company, every organization within the same industry has their unique challenges. So let's look at a few data points on the attack patterns and the impact and the motivation. In the 2006 Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report, it was noted that the top three attack pattern categories, web application attacks, denial of service, and credit card skimmers, accounted for 88% of all cyber incidents in the financial industry. 82% of all confirmed data breaches were a result of attacks on web ap applications. In other industries, in comparison, privilege misuse, malware, physical theft and loss are much more prevalent. But these are merely the symptoms. We are working furiously to cover our bases with two-factor authentications, with more robust patch and vulnerability management, with better threat intelligence, and hundreds of security tools. Yet we continue to see this trend where attackers were able to compromise our systems in a matter of minutes, sometimes seconds, but it would take us weeks and months to detect such compromise. So I would argue, in the battle of cybersecurity, in general, we as a whole are focused too much on the symptoms rather than the root cause. What are the root causes? For application securities, the reasons and challenges could be that the development teams are not integrating security early enough in the software development lifecycle. It could be that they're only looking at the security defects in code, but overlooking the flaws in their design and their business logic. Or it could be they're looking at the use cases, but not the abuse cases, making the assumptions that nobody would do that, rather than thinking like the bad guys. But again, what is the root cause? It is us. It all comes down to people. We are the weakest link and we all know it. No! <laughs> so we as humans are not perfect, except for Mr. No. So we make mistakes, we build products with security defects. We make bad assumptions and stupid mistakes. We have the nature to trust, so we click on every link in every email. This is the same regardless of industry. And this, for as long as we're humans, will never change. So no, I'm not saying we're doomed. I'm not advocating for machines and robots to take over. Rather, what I believe is that there's no perfect security and complete risk mi mitigation. It is not just up to our security professionals. It is not just our job. In if that's the case, it will be impossible because we have to get it right every time and all the time, but the bad guys have to get it right only once. Instead, it is up to every person in every organization and every system to be part of the defense mechanism. We must work together to practice good security hygiene, to build more secure products, to create visibility and automation, to generate a network of Im digital immune systems just like our physical body has to detect, defend, and heal. And that is how we can survive and thrive in this new reality of cybersecurity. Thank you.